everyone, it's Jenny from Homestead Corner, and today I have got my top 10 barter items. Bartering can definitely come in handy, especially in the case of a collapse. If we had a complete collapse in this country and we were not able to get things at the grocery store and we had to rely completely on ourselves and what we can do, bartering will be huge. And that way you'll be able to trade goods with other people and get the things that you need that you're not able to produce yourself. So I think that is super important, being prepared to barter and practicing bartering now, today with your friends and family, and maybe someone local is looking for something you have, and they may have something that you want, and you could make a fair trade. So bartering is really a big thing, especially in a collapse, and if there is very, very little money, what can you produce? and what do you have that you could trade. So I have a list here of 10 things that I think are super important and would make wonderful trades. And there are lots of other things as well. But before I get started on that list, I just wanted to go over a few safety precautions because if you are bartering, it can be a bit dangerous. In a long-term situation, if you are bartering, if there's a disaster and it extends to long-term or collapse, something like that, you being able to barter will really be helpful for you and your family. So, but it can be kind of dangerous and you know, you want to be super careful, especially if you're bartering with people that you don't know. If you are going down to a local area where people kind of get together to barter and people meet looking for things, I would definitely make sure that you are paying attention to your surroundings. Keep your head on a swivel. Be prepared to protect yourself. Some people are going to be aggressive and crazy. They're not going to have good intentions. So that is a couple of things. You also, if you're going to, if there is a meeting place down on this end of town and maybe one on the other, I would switch it up. I would not go to the same place all the time. Definitely, you want to mix up where you're going so you're not constantly there or, you know, you don't want people really recognizing you. You want to blend in as much as possible. If everybody else looks like they're struggling, you need to look like you're struggling too. And each time that you go to barter, if you are going to a place like that, you definitely, I would bring different things each time. I would not be, you don't want to be the person that they're like, oh, that's the lady with the food, or that's the guy that's got all the water. You don't want them thinking that. So maybe you bring water one time to barter a little bit. Maybe you bring food another time. Maybe just matches and candles or whatever it is that you have to barter. Um, batteries, anything like that. So these are just a few tips just to keep you safe because it can be dangerous, especially in a disaster situation. People are going to be desperate. You might be mostly prepared, but everybody is not. Most people are not prepared. So let's get into this list. Okay, so number 10, I think hunting and fishing supplies. Whether it is lures, fishing poles, you know, if you have an excess of guns, if it would have to be something extremely, extremely valuable, life-saving for me to trade a gun. It's not something that would be on the top of my list. And ammo as well. A lot of people recommend having extra ammo for bartering, but personally, myself, extra ammo is a good thing, but bartering with strangers for ammo you don't want to turn around and get shot with what you just traded. So I think those, you know, those are touchy things. And bartering would be okay with the people that you know, you trust, you love. You know, if you want, you know, your brother needs 
he has to have any ammo for hunting. You want to give him ammo if you have what fits his gun. Good Lord, I know I would give my brother a gun and ammo and food or whatever. You know, he's my brother. I would do that. And but there are some people you will go a little bit further for because they are part of your circle and others, especially strangers, you are going to want to be extremely careful what you are bartering because, you know, although people are going to be looking for guns and ammo and they may have something that you want, you really want to be super careful because you don't want to have that used against you afterwards. Number nine tools lots and lots of hand tools i think tools are so important and you know screwdrivers hand drills garden tools all kinds of hand tools not just one thing not just for woodworking or working on the car but all kinds of stuff things that you can you know repair a table leg with uh, duct tape zip ties those are good handy tools in an emergency and they work really well and people are going to look for that stuff when it runs out number eight sugar honey salt spices things to flavor your food when people get down to just the basics if all you've got is rice and beans and you have no spices and no flavorings or anything to change it up food fatigue sets in and that becomes dangerous so the, I think those will be one thing that people are really looking for they may be looking for rice and beans but once they acquire that they are going to want some spices because rice and beans or just plain old rice every meal gets old. Number seven alcohol, tobacco, cigarettes, things like that, those vices that people have. When you are in a horrible situation and you're addicted to something, people are going to be super, super desperate. And they'll do just about anything to get their hands on whatever it is they need. And alcohol has tons of uses. I think everyone should have a good supply of that because it also can be used you know, medicinally, for cleaning, for all kinds of stuff. Alcohol has tons of uses. But those cigarettes, tobacco, you know, even chewing tobacco, people get addicted to that stuff. And they really are going to be desperate and looking to do whatever they can to get that. And number six, seeds. Seeds are going to be super duper valuable. You are going to want to have lots of those on hand and you will be able to trade those. Heirloom seeds are absolutely the best because once you grow it, then you'll be able to take the seeds and save them for next time. And you can keep collecting more and more seeds. So I think seeds are gonna be vital. People are gonna need fresh fruits and vegetables. And living out of a pantry, definitely, you don't get as much nutrition as you're gonna get from those fresh vegetables. So in a collapse situation or a long-term disaster, definitely seeds are going to be huge. And number five, hygiene products. We are in a disaster, collapse, anytime, we need to keep ourselves clean. And not just hygiene for our bodies, but oral hygiene, feminine hygiene, all of it. You, need, you wanna make sure you have everything for all of that and extras because people are not going to be prepared and any of these things that you can make will definitely be helpful because you know your supply will run out eventually and being able to trade a handmade product that you can keep reproducing is the best way to go any kind of heat or lighting will also be highly sought after for the people that aren't prepared they are not going to have excess flashlights batteries oil lanterns um, you can make out of your old cooking oil you can make little oil heating heaters and lanterns and stuff like that so you know learning those little skills can definitely help you because you would have that to be able to trade for something that you do need and number three is medical supplies first aid all that stuff you want to make sure if you have extra band-aids extra gauze things like that that stuff is going to be highly sought after over-the-counter medications things like that diarrhea pills 
you know, things to help with pain, anything of that way. If you make any herbal concoctions for yourself, making extra to trade would be a wonderful thing because that's something that you can keep producing and you can really use that as a wonderful barter item. Number two, rice and beans. Food is gonna be something people are looking for and rice and beans are pretty inexpensive, really easy to store and you can keep a lot of them on hand for not a lot of money. So, and they will keep you alive. Rice and beans together is a complete protein and it will keep you alive. If you can add anything to it, that is absolutely wonderful. But those basics, people are going to be looking for that stuff in a disaster situation. You know, they're going to need food. They, some people have two, three days worth of food. Some people eat out every stinking meal. I mean, I don't know how people afford that, but I know people that do it. You know, it's just, that's how they live. They're used to it. They don't have a lot of food in the house, maybe a few days worth, but normally they just eat out all the time. So having extra supply, you know, if you plan a certain amount for your family and you have an extra, you know, 50 pounds of that stuff, breaking it up in small bags and portions and being able to barter that is a great thing. And number one, the most valuable thing that you can have for a barter item is going to be water, fresh, clean water. If you know how to make filters, you could sell filters. If you have a big supply of like water filters or something, you could trade them off for other things. But there are just having, there are ways to, you know, to filter water naturally, you know, get some coal out of your fireplace, some dirt from the river, you know, get the water, some grass clippings, t-shirt, you can run it through, make your own filter and run it through and you can have fresh, clean drinking water that you don't have to worry about. And if you have all the stuff to do that, you will be able to keep yourself in fresh water and help others by bartering water for other things that you may need. So and water is the one thing that everybody has to have and you cannot go long without it. So I think in a disaster situation, it's going to be the most looked for item. And that is it for my top 10 items to barter. I think that it's important to start bartering as soon as possible so you get a feel for it and you know get people comfortable with it and things like that. Maybe your neighbor is awesome at growing tomatoes and you're awesome at you know foraging for Jerusalem artichokes. You have tons. So Maybe talk to them about switching and trading and coming to a fair deal and it will just help you with that skill of bartering. So if this situation ever arises, you'll be prepared and able to handle it. And that's it for today. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.